Hi everybody, I'm Grant from Ugly Adventures and today we're going to look at the Rego 400 amp hour lithium phosphate iron battery. Now this has been delivered to me by Renergy, it's come on a big pallet and it's wrapped in plastic. It was raining when it arrived, fortunately it's IP65 waterproofed. <laughs> So this is something to think about. If you buy one of these, it's going to come on a pallet and it's heavy. Let's have a look inside. So let's open it up, firstly. Get one of the plastic off here. Okay, so inside, well packaged. There is a Anderson's 350 connector, which is a plug and play for the rest of the Rego kit. Um, you can have eight of these batteries in parallel and they have a home kit where you can plug them in together. So this battery is designed for use around uh, a remote cabin, an off-grid cabin, but it can also be used in our camper vans. So big heavy duty cable sitting on the top of it. So we have a look in the side, we've got the instruction manual with the warranty card. It's a five year warranty for this product because it isn't cheap that's for sure and there's a sticker for your van and there's also a contact list for the various people for the support group so we'll have a look at that in a little while remove all the plastic on the top here and we can see it's cover it's protected in this polystyrene there is no plastic wrappers on this so um, my my frustration about the rain doesn't really matter because it's waterproof but even so normally they will send batteries wrapped in plastic within the polystyrene and then within a large cardboard box and there's some support blocks in the end here to stop it from being damaged in transit so my advice is when you get it open it up carefully and let's see if we can get it out of the box without too much of a drama Okay, so I've removed all the packaging and now it's time to lift it. There are two handles at the top here, just as well, because it's 50 kilos. Let's see if I can lift this without hurting myself. So, success. So like all batteries, don't break it, don't dismantle it. Check it that it's not shattered in any way or damaged in any way when you get it and um, don't drop it at 20 at uh, 50 kilos it's or 114 pounds it could be very easy to drop so try and operate with two people although these handles here are strong and robust let's move the cable out of the way and see what we've got in the front here very nice uh, aluminium casing it feels very robust and strong. There are a series of controls around here, around the on-off, the battery, battery level and power. There is also indications about the heater and whether it kicks on or kicks off. So I think the operation is fairly simple. We just press this for a second. The blue lights flash to tell us the battery levels and indicators and it's telling me here that we are 50% charged. If the battery is operating normally and sitting at rest there will be no light here and there's also a, a heater status lamp here. There is a listing here of what the various lights mean. So when they're off they are normal uh, for the battery. Um, there's a yellow lamp if there's warning and there's red for protection so over voltage or under voltage. Uh, same for the heater it comes it's off and on and then um, a malfunction. So this battery has an inbuilt heater function which operates when the temperature drops below 5 degrees Celsius or 41 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, it will only come on if A that temperature is reached and B it's got a 15 amp charging supply. So it must be to work properly I'm assuming you know if you're sitting in your cabin or your van in the winter and it's cold uh, hopefully there's some sun coming in from your solar panels to keep it uh, charged up or you're in fact hooked up to a uh, shore power 
connection. And so that's really it in terms of its functions. To switch it off, hold the button for three seconds, and it should just flash itself off. It's recommended that you charge it fully before you first start to use it, and that you don't charge this battery below zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you haven't got uh, enough power to sh charge the heater, then it's not gonna get warm. So um, that is a bit of a thing to think about in terms of this big battery. So one of the funny things about being on film is size does not always represent reality. And quite often I'll say to somebody it's quite big or this is quite large on terms of a battery or an inverter and then I get comments below that say oh I didn't realize it was that big. So I'm going to do this on the film and actually just to show you how uh, big it is, it is all but 18 inches long. It is 11 inches wide or 10 and a half inches wide is the official figure and it is just under 13 inches tall. So that's the size you've got to get it in into your van. Um, I'll put the sizes in metric below so that we know, but it's a big block that you'll have to fit into the van. It needs a bit of space around it. There is no cooling fins on it, so it's naturally cooled. But again, you don't want it in somewhere hot because it's not great for batteries anyway. And you've got to be able to access it to be able to switch it on and off. There are the communication ports on the side here, which is the CAN bus RVC communications that Renogy are using for their topography for the Rego suite. If you're connecting lots of these together, then that's probably where you want to go and join the communications together or and how you and how to connect the Anderson's 350 connectors into uh, a, a, a gang of them together. Eight in parallel, that's how many you can have, so that makes a big whopping amp hour battery reserve. Okay, so some facts and figures apart from the size is it can discharge its 400 amp hours um, at a maximum rate of 350 amps. And it can charge, providing it's in the right temperature band, um, up to 300 amps at a time. So we are big power going in and out of this battery, which is why you've got the AWG4. And my advice is if you are going to be joining this to your van, you have to buy the uh, connecting cable, which is connects into the Anderson's here and then links into your buzz bars and batteries. And so everything that you are linking to must be able to cope with a 350 amp uh, flow into uh, your systems. So that's something to think about because that means you know some of the the Blue Sea buzz bars are 150 amps. You are now talking about getting a buzz bar that is capable of co of coping with uh, 400 amps plus 25 percent. So a 500 amp hour buzz bar to connect this all up together. The other thing it says is that this will operate for. 4,000 cycles or 3,800 cycles to 80% DOD. And what that means is that it can use its 400 amps hours fully 3,800 times uh, before it starts to de degrade in terms of its capacity. Uh, so that is quite a big lifespan for this. But my challenges are on, on this, this battery is uh, its size and its physical weight to be fitting into a van, particularly if you're um, going to put it into a smaller van, which I don't think it works particularly well. So the other thing that I don't like about it is this Anderson's connector. I, I think that's quite an expensive piece and you don't get the cable with it, which means you have to buy another cable. But what I do like about it, it is Bluetooth enabled, apparently. So the instruction manual is quite large print, very informative about the battery status and the on and offs and the LED indicators. And it also gives you clear instructions on how to connect it uh, using the Rego combiner boxes or connecting it to your battery directly. Apart from the K 
CAN bus communication network, it also has a Bluetooth function. So I've got my mobile phone with the DC Home app on, and so what I'm going to try and do now is see if we can get this to work. I've just gone into my phone app now, I'm going to switch this on. Blue light's flashing. And now I'm going to add a device. So it's currently looking. And it's found a battery. And here we are. It's telling me it's 30 or 29.8 percent charged. It's a 400 amp hour capacity. It's got 119 amp hours left in it. Its present voltage is 13.1 volts. Heating mode is off, which firmware, no errors, and uh, temperatures. So there you go. That was as simple as it gets. And if it's as simple as that on the phone, it will be as simple as that when it comes to getting it connected to the Core 1 or the Renogy 1 M1. And so in, the, in that respect, I like this um, unit for the communication point. Um, I don't like the weight, I don't like the size, but if I compare it to two 200 amp hour lithium ion batteries, I think it might be 35% smaller. Let's just have a quick look. So to just give this that perspective, here is the 200 amp hour uh, Renogy battery, uh, which is in a Bluetooth version, against this one here. So this one is definitely longer. Okay, it's not as tall, um, and it's a very similar width to this one as well. But you're gonna have two of these as opposed to one of these. Now, the advantages of having a two 200s is probably easier to fit within your camper van. So you, you can get them into two different locations with a bit more ease. This does take up a big chunk of space. So that's something you need to decide, but there are advantages with having a small one versus this one. Uh, but you need to work that one out yourself. So there you have it. The Rego 400 amp hour lithium phosphate iron battery with its self heat function. Um, it's a big beast. I think it's got potential. It is expensive. I'm not sure if it's cheaper than buying two 200 batteries. Um, but if you've got the space and you need the capacity, or you're running a cabin, or you want to put it on a boat, then this waterproof version is probably a good thing to consider. I'm Graham, this is Mogul Adventures, and thank you for watching. Bye bye.